episode, I promised that we would talk about WeChat. As we are on the topic of privacy, it ties in quite well. So uh, WeChat is a very popular app that we use here in China. And Winston, why don't you talk about uh, talk about it? Okay, well, I'll tell you what it is, first of all. Uh, and in fact, I'm one of the lucky guys who got to be there right at the beginning because I was working for We uh, Tencent. Sorry, I was working for Tencent at the time when it was being developed, and so I got to sort of beta test it or beta test, as I would say. And uh, what it is really is, it's it's basically it started off as a, a knockoff of WhatsApp. So basically, just instant messaging. Yeah. But it's got a lot of very innovative features, and uh, now it's evolved into something a lot more. Um, a little tidbit, by the way, something very interesting. You know, Tencent, which is, you know, it rivals Google uh, in size. It's huge, right? Yeah. And uh, its main shareholder is actually a South African company. Oh, really? Strangely enough, yeah. Close to home. Yeah. So anyway, uh, maybe you can explain why it was developed. So basically. Due to the fact that Android is a Google, is a Google-based company, right? Yeah. Google services were quickly blocked and neutered, really, in China. So Android phones almost became useless. And because of the severe lack of app developers in China at the time, you had really kind of chintzy, cheap apps that were trying to do things that, you know, Google couldn't get done here in China. So what happened was WeChat comes along from Tencent and includes a bunch of these services within its own app. So it actually turned into an operating system of sorts. So chat, payments, file sharing, all this kind of stuff became in one app, and it kind of made this concise package that remedied all of China's problems. Well, I guess yeah, that's not that's not wrong. Um, let's talk about what it's actually useful for, and I'm going to start with uh, how it started. Let's let's. Let's uh, start from the beginning. I mean, it basically was only uh, an instant messenger kind of microblogging thing in the beginning. Right. And uh, you could use it to chat. And the the revolutionary thing was, of course, are we going down here? No, I thought we we're doing. Okay, just going straight. Okay. Um, the revolutionary thing was that you could send little voice messages. So you could hold down the button, speak into the mic, and it would shoot off a, a very small voice message. So people started to use it instead of voice calls. Right. And, you know, you could send texts because it was just like WhatsApp. So it replaced text messaging and voice calls here in China. And now nobody, like literally nobody makes phone calls anymore. They just send a, a WeChat message, you know, either voice or text. I don't either. Yeah, I don't. I only use WeChat now. Yep. So that, that was the, the primary reason for it and it evolved from there. So maybe you could tell us what else it's used for now. So one of the most revolutionary features of WeChat, really what took it past the whole thing that Winston said as a chat app, was WeChat payments. And that basically tied your bank account to your WeChat account. So you could actually use your phone to pay for everything. So you go to the shop and buy things with it, go to the supermarket. You can uh, also, for me, like personally, it was really annoying to get big uh, wads of cash when people were paying for tuition from my clients in my school. So they can pay me out WeChat now and it just goes directly into my bank account. So that became super, super useful for people. And again, ties back to the, the lack of privacy thing we talked about because WeChat Pay is connected directly into your bank account, which I think a lot of Westerners would have a problem with. Oh yeah, for sure. But the thing is, so far, I've been using it a lot. Yeah, and me I, too. I haven't had any issues so well, far. I'm gonna, you know what, Winston, I'm gonna send you some money right now. Okay, well, we're on a bike, so how, how are you gonna do that? Cut to this clip. Okay, all right. Look so, at that. There we go. Now, uh, you know, we did uh, an episode about Chinese New Year and how red packets or lucky money are a thing. Right. So I was wondering if you could maybe tell everybody about how the red packet situation works on WeChat. Around Chinese New Year, people give each other red envelopes full of money. And uh, WeChat kind of made that a little bit easier. So what they did was introduce a red envelope feature. So around Chinese New Year, people were able to send each other money. Now you can do it all the time. Um, you can do random amounts, you can send random amounts of money, or you can send spe specified amounts of money. So people that were not able to go home for Chinese New Year were able to send money back home through little red envelopes with a personalized message on it. So it's kind of kind of cool for people, but it did spiral into some nefarious things. Yeah, I mean, the people do gambling with that, right? It's, it's huge. It's a huge gambling scene for red envelope gambling on WeChat. Yeah, it's kind of interesting. It is. And let's stress that this is actually real money. This isn't like... Yeah some kind of Bitcoin or something like that. Right. That it's, is real money. You, you can actually withdraw that money and put it into your bank account. Right. 
and you can do a, I think it's a thousand RMB a day worth of transfers for free yeah then there's like a, a small percentage like a one percent right. or something yeah but people people use WeChat pay to buy like cars and stuff yeah like you, you can use you it for can. When we rented the equipment for our big documentary, Conquering Southern China, we we paid for the equipment with WeChat Pay. <laughs> That's true, actually. Yeah. And, uh, you know, you've got that little QR code thing, so in the shop, you right. can go buy your groceries and then just basically they scan it. Yeah, so it's really useful for payment. Winston, what's, what's one of the other, like, useful features that you like about it? Okay, well, they've started to add all sorts of things. So, look, we were talking about payment. I'm just going to quickly expand on that. You can also pay your bills, like your utilities. Oh, okay. Yeah. You can go pay for your water. You can top up your mobile phone. I forgot about it. It's so convenient yeah. that I forgot about that. Yeah, it's That's really, really good stuff. Like, it's quite amazing that you can do all of this now through this one single app. Right. But, you know, I've just applied for... I'm moving over from a work visa to a spousal visa. Uh -huh. And in order to do that, you have to book for your visa, right, before you go in these days. You have to book online. Yeah. So you can go through the very tedious process of going through their websites. It's all in Chinese, a pain in the ass. But actually, in the WeChat app, you've got these uh, official accounts. Yeah. Right? And uh, one of them is basically for booking visas. So if you're a foreigner or even a, a local and you need to do something at the Public Security Bureau, you can book your appointment through the app. So I booked my visa appointment. Which is awesome. Where? There? Yeah, up here. Is there something up there? You mean here? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'll go right. Okay. You know, right is right, and left is wrong. Yep. <laughs> okay, anyway, so yeah, that's that's another thing, these official accounts. So big companies can actually have proper official accounts that let you do things, you know, you can get coupons and do whatever you want. Yeah. So that's pretty useful. Um, what else is there? In terms of like services on WeChat, yeah, there's also a lot of social um, services, and one of the biggest ones that we forgot to talk about so far is Moments. And Moments, Moments are Facebook, really. It's Facebook kind, on your WeChat. Kind, kinda, yeah. I, yeah, you said people like have argued against that, but I, to me, it's like Facebook. It's like a Facebook wall. Okay. Yeah. And you post, you can post pictures, you can post short videos, and people can comment and like them, just like on Facebook, except it is ad-free, so you only see the stuff within your friends list. And number two, it has a lot of good privacy features, actually, like you can block certain people from seeing your posts and whatnot. Yeah. So that's pretty cool, too. It's like a little micro-blog. Yeah, don't forget the, the group chat stuff as well. That's like a huge thing. People set up groups, like uh, I'm part of like a photography group, for instance. And people post their photos there to get critiques, yep. you know. And the groups are pretty nice because if you're a group administrator, <coughs> you can actually send out group messages. And uh, right. if you have an official account, you can actually make money out of it somehow. I don't really know how. But you can also do conference video calls on group chats now as well. Yeah. Which is cool. Pretty convenient. You're talking about social stuff. You know, people... There are other apps that do it better, but people yeah. actually use WeChat for dating. True. You can, in the WeChat app, actually just search nearby uh -huh. or get that message in a bottle or you can do a shake or, you know, there are many, many ways to find out just people nearby. True. So you can kind of specify you want to look for girls and you can find them and you can send messages to them and say, hey, you know, I'm a creep <laughs> who's just like... <laughs> Is, you realize now we have to actually send that message to someone. Okay, yeah. Well, okay. I'm a creep and I'm, I'm here sitting alone and I kind of right. looking for a little something, something. <laughs> you know? So what do, am I doing here? So, like, do you want to go for coffee or something? Right. Um, and then, like, if you're lucky, you'll get someone who's like, yeah, well, you know, I'm a weirdo too. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> nice. Yeah, people do, do use it. Uh, I know a couple of people who've met their girlfriends through WeChat. Right. Which is kind of strange but yeah i guess in the beginning people thought all all online dating was weird sure <laughs> i want to ask you a question actually yeah why do you think westerners haven't taken to each other countries like india have i think it's due to privacy okay i mean wechat is just so invasive it takes over your phone it has access to your contact list. right you know, like it ties into your bank account. It's got all these other weird plugins and strange things going on. And any like Westerner in their right mind would 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 think, like, this is dangerous. You know? I got you. Makes so sense. That's why. But I mean, know, I love it. Yeah, me too. 
it's convenient, it's wonderful, but I'm going to tell you that my um, bank account that I link, that I do link to it, I keep very limited funds in there. Yeah, I don't keep a ton of money in there. Yeah, like maybe 3,000 RMB max. <laughs> that's yeah. true, yeah. Because so you don't want to lose yeah. that. Yeah, like the thing is, if I lose that 3,000 RMB, I'm going to feel sad. <laughs> but, you know, if I lost 100,000, I would probably just, I don't know, kill myself or something. Right. <laughs> well, not that bad, but you no, know. No, but kill something. Yeah, yeah. I'd sulk <laughs> for a very long time and I'd be poor and I'd have to sleep on the street. Nice. Yeah. So I guess that's, that's about it, isn't it? Pretty much. I mean, WeChat is an amazing uh, program. If you're going to come to China, you have to install it. Everybody yeah. uses it. You know, you basically, that's how you make contacts. People don't use business cards anymore. They use WeChat. You know, it is the way forward. If you want to do business here, if you want to make payments, you know, anything. So, I guess that is it. Is there anything you'd like to say to our subscribers before we finish up? Well, if you, oh my goodness, you really buy me there. I guess I want to say, say, stay safe first. And I also want to get off the bike and look at this gorgeous little lake. Oh, do you? Where? Right next to us. Okay. Let's stop then. Oh, oh. Winston's really good off-road. This is quite the, uh, quite the outro we got going out here. Yeah, so what I we, guess what, what I wanted to say, Winston, yeah. was that WeChat is an incredible tool. It allows us to chat with people around the world and within China. It's very convenient for us. Yep. And I really wanted to say that I appreciate you joining our chat every week on Monday <laughs> on uh, ADV China. So thank you so much for like, commenting, and subscribing. Yeah, and if you don't join our chat, which you didn't, and... Uh, <laughs> the comment section. Oh, oh yeah, okay. Uh -huh. If you didn't join our WeChat chat, where are you are, what are you doing? <laughs> Not like the weather today, because it's very polluted and hot and disgusting. Stay awesome. Take a breath, you fill up my lungs yeah. And if my mind